Hi there, and thanks for tuning in. My name is Cecilia, and for episode 27, we're sitting down with Jane McGrath, who is a graduate of our two-year full-time professional after training course. Welcome back, Jane. Hello. Can you believe it's 10 years? No, you just reminded me. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, in a nutshell, how would you sum up the last 10 years of being in the industry, if that's even possible? Yeah, yeah, I know it's a, it's a, it's a big question. <laughs> um, I suppose if I could start with saying there's a lot of peaks and a lot of troughs, and mm -hmm. a lot of peaks and a lot of troughs. Yep. And sometimes there's a long peak for a while and then there could be a trough for a year, yeah. whatever, you yeah. know. Um, and I think I've kind of come to realisation, you know, being in my late 20s, early 30s, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, that I think we're, we're lucky to even get two or three kind of gigs mm -hmm. a year. Yeah. Because I've just kind of taken my life back a bit more, you know, because I think when I when I left the Gage School, I was so determined to get everything and to be good at everything and yeah. to please everyone. And I think that comes with, with being 19 as well, very young and very ambitious. And not that you lose that as you get older, but you just kind of tend to mm -hmm. be a bit kinder to yourself yeah. and um, get a little bit more confidence in that. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Um, and so far, what has been your highlight to date? Highlight. Pick one. Now, I know we, we talked about this before, so if I could just think of one that just comes to me straight away. Mm -hmm. um, I worked on a, a, a zombie feature film, and it was originally a short film that I worked with an amazing director called David Frain, mm -hmm. and uh, it was called The Third Wave, which means the third wave of people being allowed out into society. Okay. So they've been cured from this, this uh, virus. So uh, we got together again when it was ready to do the feature, and I got to be the movement director, so I, I just have flashbacks to being in a room like this with hundreds of um, everyday people, not just actors, and training them to be zombies and teaching them how to be zombies. And I think, like, I was like, gosh, my job is cool. <laughs> yes, yeah. and that's a lovely highlight because that's something that, like, I, I've read everything you've done, but I would not know that. Oh, there you that's go, yeah. Highlight. <laughs> so, nice. Um, and we last saw you on stage in A Love Like That yes. as part of Dublin's Theatre Festival. Um, can you tell us about the character that you played and what did you love about yeah. this character? Well, first of all, I absolutely loved the idea of working with Billy Roach again. Um, I worked with him on The Cavalcaders um, a couple of years ago. Okay, very good. With Decadent Theatre Company, Andrew Flynn yeah. directed it and he also directed A Love Like That. And as soon as I heard of it, I was like, yes, I'd love to do it. Nice. And um, I suppose one of your questions was, uh, what's the most challenging role? Yeah, I, yeah. I suppose it's hard to say because each one comes with, a, with its own challenges. Mm -hmm. And um, I suppose um, working in this industry, there, there is a tendency you can be typecast, which isn't mm -hmm. a bad thing because you'll, you'll get jobs. But I suppose I was used to a different kind of energy in a character. Um, whereas uh, Debbie Burke, who I played in A Love Like That, she's this ambitious, uh, striving librarian who wants to make it to be chief librarian. And um, she's very brass, quick, witty, flirty. And it was a character that I, maybe I played it in a scene in, in the Gage School, but I can't remember the last time I played a character like that. So I, I had to really sit back and go, look, really have fun, really play with this. Yeah. Um, whereas before, you know, I'm used to playing very introverted, very yeah. dark characters. Yeah. So it was such a joy and a challenge to play a nice. uh, much lighter role. Yeah. Nice. Um, now, there is no denying it that life as an actor is hard work on both the body and the brain. It is. So how do you find that balance in your everyday life to make sure that you're looking after Jane? Well, like I said before, it is kind of... Um, not letting it completely take over your life. Mm. And it can be easily done because you have this, I, I call it like a little sickness, you know, wanting to be on stage and, and wanting to act. Yeah. yeah, You can't get rid of it, it's like a little bug. Like I've had it since I was about five years old mm. and it's still there now that I'm 30, 
31. Um, and I, I suppose getting that bit older, I, I've kind of been kinder to myself and just kind of taking each thing as it comes. And if, if I don't feel um, ready for a certain role, or I might just be honest with my agent and they've been very, very good to me. And especially with my dyslexia, mm -hmm. um, it, it is specifically, you know, working on scripts and preparing for an audition can be quite difficult and mm. tedious. Um, but another thing, advice that I would give to actors, now I can only speak from my own yeah, experience. Yeah, absolutely. Is, it is so important to enjoy the process, not just the gig when you get it, it's so important to enjoy. You have to enjoy self tapes. They're like awful because <laughs> there's nobody there to tell you yeah. you're doing something yeah. wrong or whatever. Yeah. So you know, I, I have a screen that I bought in a blind shop. I just bought a, a white screen and then I, I have like tripods. Um, I love you know, that kind of thing. And yeah. I just use my phone, and I think it is important for actors to to enjoy enjoy doing self tapes yeah. and the process. Because it's hard. It's it's because it, the you, the phone will just ring and you've made plans. Sometimes you have to cancel them, mm. and you should be okay with that. But one important thing is, don't cancel everything, because your life does come first. And I'm only realising that now. Yeah, that's really good advice. <laughs> though I mean, that's life advice. I'm I'm learning from this. Yeah, and I'm not I mean, even like the actor. Yeah. Somebody who's got years on me might say no, that's wrong. But anyway, I can only speak from my own experience. Yeah, but it's a it's a learning process, yeah. and we always forget to enjoy that yes, process yeah. and not just look ahead to the goal. Um, speaking of like the process and the goal, are applications for a full-time professional actor training course open at the end of the month and having been through the application process yourself yes. and having had many an audition, have you any top, top tips to share with our prospective students? Yeah, I think it's important to have some stuff under your belt ready to go. Mm -hmm. um, definitely have two Shakespeare's under your belt, two contemporary monologues. Um, just be ready, have a few songs ready, nice. a dance, um, a movement piece. And th what's great about the Gage School, it gives you all those skills and tools to, yeah. to go out and be ready to show what you got. Like, you yeah, know? yeah. Um, and honestly, just, just be yourself. Like There's so many times I go in and just be like, being somebody else, they, yeah. they can see you right through yeah. that. You know, yeah. they can see yeah. you through all that kind of stuff. Yeah. And uh, enjoying it and playing. Like I've only realized in the last few years how important play is because I'd be going in and being so determined and working so, so, so hard that mm. I'd run myself into the ground. Mm. Whereas you can just look at a scene, have your take on it and just go in and with questions and a little bit of knowledge about the script and make sure you read the play. <laughs> the but enjoy it and play. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Can you remember, you know, 2007 walking into your audition here at GSA? I do. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And it was uh, Liam Halligan and um, uh, a mime teacher, Sharon O'Doherty. Mm -hmm. Sharon? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I remember doing my, my contemporary piece, my Shakespeare. And then Sharon said to me, so what will you do if this doesn't work out? Like, I understand they need to ask those questions mm -hmm. just to see what's going, what, how you're thinking. Yeah. And uh, she said, do you have a plan B? And I said, no, I don't have a plan B. And, you know, it is, you know, quite exciting to hear somebody say that, that they have that confidence. Mm -hmm. um, but with regarding coming out of the gaiety, it, it is important to have a plan B. It's important to work. It's important to have your part-time job mm -hmm. or full-time mm -hmm. job. Um, because it, it's essential for your brain and your mental health. Yeah. Jane, I have so many more questions that I have to <laughs> ask, but I have to stop there. Okay. So thank you so much for coming in. No and in the meantime, we will continue to watch your career go from strength oh, to strength you. with yeah, pride. Send out the good feelers out there. For <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Thank you so much. Thank for you. Having me.